Alright. Welcome to the second video. This is act this is the video that I'm gonna show where I'm gonna show you how to actually do the test. Um something I didn't mention in the previous video is that when you set up the box before the patient comes in, um you you don't have the option to set up the box with gloves on or not. Um whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Um again. So so right here I've, I have the two cuts that I talked about. I label this one so there's no urine here. And you give the other cup the patient to get some urine. Ideally, you want the cup to be about a third filled. Um, you don't want it too much where you have a full cup of urine and it will probably spill everywhere. Or you don't want too little where you don't have enough to do the test. So, a third would be a good amount. Alright. So, the patient comes back with a cup filled with urine. What you're going to do is... You're going to pour half of that into, into your labeled cup, and you're going to eyeball it. Does it have to be perfect? And then you're going to put the label cup on the side, because we're not going to do any tests on it, alright? We're going to proceed on testing the urine with the not label the cup. Okay. First thing you want to do is take the temperature, since the longer you take, the colder it will get. And if it falls under 95, you're gonna have to ask the patient to pee again. So we're gonna do the temperature first. When you turn on the thermometer, make sure um, before dipping the thermometer into the urine, make sure that the hourglass on the top right uh, disappear first before dipping it in because that's because it doesn't it won't work until you let it load first. Give it in for a couple of seconds, it'll beep and this urine is 96.6 .6, so that's in a good range so we can move on. Next thing I like to do it's the nick alert, the cold running. The reason for that is this takes 30 minutes, so I want to get this started as soon as I can. Alright, take it out. Hold it only on the green, touch only the green part, alright? Uh, if you touch any other part, it's gonna, it might interfere with the test and the test might not come out the way that we want it to come out. If it will come out at all. <laughs> now, on the strip on the bottom, there's a cotton portion where we're just there's arrows pointing down, right? When you dip the strip into the urine, don't dip past that that arrow where the arrow is pointing at. Okay, and a little trick to to do this uh, with the dipping is tilt the cup a little bit and then just dip it in and you gotta count 20 seconds And then you're going to place the strip within the dotted box. Next, I will probably do the pregnancy test. Again, same concept. On the pregnancy test, there's a, there's a line that you don't want to pass on the bottom, all right? And you did this for five seconds. Last 
lastly is the validity test. Usually, once I take out the validity test, I throw the bottle in to make sure to make sure the bottle is, is clean. And the validity test are seven boxes. Oh, all right. Make sure when you dip it in, dip all seven boxes and count to three seconds. All right. And that's pretty much it. Um, a little recap: the cold the coldening trip you did for twenty seconds. The pregnancy test you did for five seconds. And the validity test you did for three seconds. All right. And the wait time for the whole test is up is twenty minutes. Now, this take the validity uh the coding test is the one that takes twenty minutes. The pregnancy test actually comes out pretty quickly, uh, within about a minute or two or so, right? Um. Obviously, I can't get pregnant, so I have only one line, which is good. Uh, but ideally, we want our patients that's pregnant to have two lines. For the validity test, on the bottle, on the on the label of the bottle, there's just gonna be kind of like a scale of what's normal and what's not. So you just want to make sure that the colors are within the normal range. Now, you don't you don't want the the sorry, excuse me. So, sorry about that. Um, um, so, yeah. There's seven boxes, match the colors within the normal range, okay? So, now, sometimes you might see one box off out of the seven. Uh, that will be okay. Um, now, if you see about three or four boxes off, to the abnormal range, you want to kind of question um, and maybe possibly ask for a new urine sample as well. Okay? Uh, Alright. Now, for your codonine test, usually it takes 20 minutes, but if your patient already quit for a while, um, that can take up or uh, that could take really quick. It could come out really quickly within min uh, within five minutes. It could come out. The result can come out. But if you don't see anything, uh, or it's not at a level that you expect it to be, then uh, you should wait the whole full twenty minutes. Okay. Uh, and for the results, you want to look for the lowest possible uh, visible red line that you can see. Again, the lowest visible red line you can see. So it could be a very faint red line, um, but as long as you see it, it's it's considered there. All right, and you're going for the lowest number, not the highest. So there's it's out of six numbers, um, zero. Uh, uh, no one ever gets zero anymore. Um, they used to, but something changed, and no one would will get zero, even if you're a non-smoker. So the lowest number you can possibly get now is one. Okay, um, two would be uh, some type of uh, nicotine expo uh, nicotine exposure, uh, something like mm, secondhand smoke. Is a con uh, it 
will be a reason why you get a two. Um, and it depends on how high exposure uh, you have to secondhand smoke. Some some patient might even have uh, get into uh, a three from secondhand exposure. Um, an example of getting a three would be probably locked inside. I wouldn't say locked, but in a room with no ventilation, with uh, a smoker that's been chain smoking five cigarettes. So the uh, the smoke kind of just stays inside the room, and the patient could just inhale it. Um, all right. Uh, anything above, if a patient smoked uh, at least one cigarette within the last twenty four hours, we should at least we should most of the time see a six. All right. Uh, so it's pretty sensitive. Uh, a five or four would be some would be something like maybe a patient smoked um, a few a couple to a few days ago um, depending on the metabolism now so I, for all the patients that start at the beginning they they would be a six because that's our, our our criteria that they have to be a smoker but so when how fast do the levels drop um, usually you know, for, to see a uh, a patient usually take about anywhere from an average of four days to see a drop from a six to a five. Um, sometimes, sometimes it takes longer. We've seen patients that 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 took two weeks to drop. We also seen patients that took about only two days to see a decrease from a six to five. And once you have that initial initial decrease, um, the rest of the way would be fast. Uh, and there's uh, a few factors to you know, how fast they can, uh, of how, of the variation. Um, one would be metabolism, another one would be food consumption. Uh, uh, third one would be the amount of secondhand exposure they have um, in the area. And I personally think uh, also the temperature. Uh, uh, temperature matters too. So if it's in the summertime. Uh, this patient would see a faster decrease compared to uh, a time in the winter. Okay. So, um, hasn't been twenty minutes yet, but you could kind of see a result for mine. I I am not a smoker. Um. So it should be a one. <laughs> me uh so right now it's the line is really light but you could definitely see a one there um i don't know how you see a definitely a solid five four three uh there are fainter line on two and then there's a really faint line on one right now now it's okay um because right now it hasn't still hasn't been been 20 minutes but Within 20 minutes, those lines should be darker, more obvious, okay? I'm not going to wait the whole 20 minutes, but that's this is essentially how, how you do the urine test. Something to, to, to also point out is, now, this strip tests for any nicotine exposure. It doesn't show what kind of use. It could be cigarettes, or it can be cigars, or it can be e-cigarettes or it can be vapes they all contain nicotine to some extent so you want to make sure that that you know if you're ex if you're expecting them to get a low level but they're not make sure that you want to ask the patient if they're using any other nicotine products another very common thing that people don't know is Marijuana use can, can cause an increase in nicotine. The reason for that is largely depends on how they smoke their marijuana. Um, if they use use a blunt, which is rolling their marijuana in a, in a tobacco leaf, um, um, that will give them 
nicotine exposure and that will increase the level. So make sure you ask them that if they, they're marijuana users. We don't condone marijuana use, but you should let them know that if they continue did they, if they do decide to continue to use marijuana, uh, it's best if they use a different method, like uh, rolling papers, um, they like to call it a joint, a, a bowl, which is similar to a pipe, and, and a bomb, okay? Um, uh, sometimes even that, there might still be an elevated level, and that's because sometimes... Um, the way the marijuana is grown, um, it's, it's laced with with some some type of nicotine in their soil, all right, or their leaf. Okay, so so this is the end of the urine test training. Okay, um, if you have any question, go ask Doctor Wen. Thank you.